All right, small update. Go ahead and catch up on some things here. So, um, haven't really done a whole lot of anything, really. Um, determined that I'm going to need to jack the car up in order to get all the mounts and stuff done, because obviously I can't get up under the car to see anything with the car sitting on the ground, so um, I'm go ahead and pull the engine, transmission, doodad, assembly out, and um, get the car jacked up and set everything back in there. Uh, I went ahead, I started fabricating up some pieces, not really fabricating anything, I cut some pieces for uh, some of the mounts, you know, th this will house the bushings, uh, here's one that's already done, or partially done, I'm going to have to get some spacers in there to fill that gap, I just got a couple of washers in there now, but I'll probably just get some larger, like fender style washers to fill in that space, um, that's just there for shiggles, so went ahead and cut this guy out, so yeah, so this is probably a little overkill, going quite that large, but, you know, whatever. Probably could have went with a quarter inch for that, but let's go with half. So, so it's got that cut. Probably some trimming needs to be done. If I remember, there's it's pretty tight in this area right here, so I think this is going to need to be notched in. To but for right now, it's you know it's just it is what it is. So this is pretty self-explanatory. I'll take it that tightened down. Um, I'll just have a, another piece of half inch that comes out. Not that piece, but I was just looking at it. Anyway, so I'll have like a piece of half inch that will come out and just weld into this guy. And that'll be that mount. And that should be the easiest. Um, I have to figure out exactly how I want to do this mount. Um, obviously, we'll have the housing. So I'll, I'll either have this piece hard mount it to this mount that mounts to the body and then have forks that come off of this you know to uh you know kind of like you know pretty similar to uh the g series mount the stock g series mount the way that guy mounts do something kind of like that or vice versa just have it where this is hard mounted to this and then have forks that bolt to the subframe that slide and i don't know um six one way half a dozen the other uh it's just what's going to look the cleanest at this point. So, so yeah. Um, the rear mount, I don't know because I can't get back there to really see what's going on with it. The top mount on that side, I think I'll save that for last because that's going to that's gonna be interesting. Maybe not. Maybe I'll do that one second, do that one, and then do that one, and then I can just... I don't know. Anyways, i got to make some templates. And then um, after I make the templates, I'll go ahead and get the car up in the air. Yada, yada, yada. All right, so got some scrap pieces that I cut that I planned on using that I'm not going to use that I could probably cannibalize to make some mounts. So I'm just going to kind of freehand this because I'm not really sure I'm not exactly sure how I want to do this. I should probably start by cleaning my bench off. but. I'm going to go do something like that. Chances of me actually doing the curved shapes are like next to none because it's just impossible to do with a grinding wheel, but you know, I figure I might as well at least attempt.
All right, I'm just gonna tinker about and then I'll show you what the end result is. All right, so I kind of worked out a general idea of the shape I want. And it'll be something like that, you know, very general transmission mount. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut out these two side pieces out of some, uh, some of the sheet stock I got and see if I can get them tacked into place. Alright, I'm not going to film this, I've already seen it before. Alright, so I got my two plates cut out. I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to use the centerpiece from the bushing and the bolt just to hold these together. It'll make it easier to keep things all lined up. I'm going to go to tack it on. And this will basically just go on like so. It's the exact width. And it'll just be tacked into place. And that'll be that for that. And then I'll have to figure out the bottom mount. Alright, so I got all the pieces cut out for three of the mounts. I haven't started on the driver's side mount yet. I figure I'll save that one for last. Because I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do for it. But, I mean, I got some ideas. I just don't know the best way to go about it. So, anyways. So here's the... Um, the three mounts are all the stuff for the first three mounts. So this is part of the, oops, this is part of the front mount. All right, so this is part of the front mount here, and this is the base plate that this mount will mount to, and this will be the subframe side of the mount. I mean, it'll be something like that, and then these two tabs will mount to the transmission. So I'm just going to go ahead and bolt this stuff together, show you what that looks like. This is the, the rear mount. Uh, this plate will attach to the subframe. Um, I'm going to have to brace it so that it doesn't bend under the weight, but uh, basically the subframe doesn't come over far enough, so I have to use this plate to extend the subframe out far enough for this mount to attach to. Um, be something like that. And then I'll figure out some way to reinforce it, probably a horizontal bar. This plate will also be, I'm going to weld it. I mean, for now it's going to be bolted to the subframe, but um, once I get it tacked up, I'll pull everything off and then uh, actually weld that to, this, to the, uh, the cross member. When I say subframe, I mean this guy, the, the, belly, the belly bar, or whatever everyone likes to call it. And of course, uh, this mount for the, the top passenger side uh, this part mounts to the goes on the engine side you know that'll go there that'll go something like that and of course I'll have the bushing that goes there so so yeah I didn't film me doing all of this because it's really tedious uh, you already kind of I've already kind of shown the process which is um, cardboard templates just kind of making everything out of cardboard first and that way I can test fit it and get a physical idea of what everything looks like so um, after I make it out of cardboard, tape it together, see what it looks like I transfer the templates over to the sheet metal or the plate metal quarter inch um, cut it out um, the way I get these curved shapes is I just kind of do a very rudimentary cut with the uh, the uh, what do you call it the angle grinder um, you know so it's all kind of squared off and then I'll put a flap disc on the angle grinder and then I'll just smooth out the corners so it's kind of rounded um, not necessary but you know same thing with this just kind of you know cut it out rough and then went over it with the flap disc to make it kind of smooth so yeah, so, um, yeah, I got everything cut out, got all the scaling off the metal. Uh, whenever you get fresh metal, sheet metal, or plate metal, or whatever you want to call it, you know, it looks like this, this that's on it. 
that looks like paint or something, but it's not paint, it's actually scaling. It's a byproduct of the metal being produced. Um, usually it comes off pretty easily. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the stuff on this bar stock comes off really easily. This stuff is a pain in the ass to get off. So, um, so yeah. Um, like I said, didn't film everything, but... Uh, I didn't think every little tiny detail of me cutting and sanding and grinding really needed to be filmed. So I'll just show you how these bounces go together real quick. This is the uh, back plate that goes on the back of the transmission. That's why this is slotted, because this will go on like so. And that'll be the, the rear trans mount combined with this guy. Once again, probably a little overkill, but Once I get all these tacked up, I'll have to take the bushings out, do the final weld because I don't want to completely melt the bushings. And this will go something like so. But I gotta get everything lined up and everything again because right now everything's not perfectly lined up. But yeah, that'll basically be how that goes. Probably gonna have to take a little material off the bottom of that to get that to sit just right. Alright, so yeah, I'm gonna get up under the car, get that rear mount into place. This guy. Go ahead and get this bolted in. Get this plate bolted on. And get this stuff kind of into place on the front. And, um, and yeah. Get the engine into the right position, and then I can tack these guys together. guys sorry about the fan noise so I got the engine transmission where it needs to be the mounts are kind of mocked up um, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do about this guy right here so it's kind of be nice if I could have this on the other side of this but this bolts like royally in the way so, so I don't know but anyways that's where it needs to be uh, this block here needs to be trimmed down because obviously that angle doesn't work so here and then we'll go right about there and then I'll just take a angle grinder and cut that out and that should work out for that but yeah and we got the rear mount climb down there show you what I'm working with. Here we can kind of see the whole rear mount contraption. Lots of shadow. It's not really working out too well. Come here. There we go. That might be a little better. So I got this plate here to extend the mount somewhat. Obviously it's a little, it's a little bendy. So I'm going to have to do a, uh, I'll do a couple of support braces go here and here and that will keep that from springboarding but yeah uh, I think I think I 
get fire up the welder and um, lay some tacks on these guys. And I will have the engine support it all by itself. Hopefully. So anyways, yeah, I managed to chew through that half inch pretty well. Um, I just went ahead and used this the, the whole way through. Uh, chewed through quite a bit of the battery. You know, it was a full charge when I started. But, um, yeah, but that's, you know, chewing non-stop through half inch, which I imagine most people probably aren't going to do. If you plan on doing this a lot, that's obviously not the tool for you. But for the average at home kind of person, I think it's great. It's pretty small. You can operate it with one hand. It's quite ergonomic, actually. You know the. So, but anyways, yeah, I like it. I probably would opt for the uh, 18 volt, but uh, like I said, I the only reason why I started buying the Milwaukee stuff was because I wanted the ratchet, and the ratchet is only in the M12 variety. So every Milwaukee tool I buy from this point forward will probably be M12 because it's what works with that battery system. So anyways, got that cut notched out. We can take this over here and it's pretty hot, obviously. Set that in there. There we go, look at that. You'd think I was a fabricator or something. But basically the way I got this aligned is putting the axles in and making sure the axles are straight. Same thing on the other side. So the axles are what appear to be straight, or as straight as I can get them. And I'm using that engine mount to um, determine what level is. So this this mount here should line up with this bolt here, just like the factory mount did, and that should should um, ensure that uh, the uh, engine is level according to you know this axis. So, like I said, I got everything kind of in place. So, time to start. time to start tacking. Happy Fourth of July, by the way. Even though it's like. You know, June, June twenty eighth right now, but whatever. So yeah, uh, be very careful when you're welding shit. Make sure you're not welding next to um, anything paper. All right, so the drivetrain is in there. It is supported by its own weight. Well, right now the jack is still in there just in case because it's just tack welded in. And I gotta take all these guys off and um, you know lay on the final welds. So obviously these the front one's gonna be easy to get off. The back one, I'm probably going to have to go ahead and lift the whole thing out to get that mount off the transmission because there is because there's a zero clearance between the steering rack and one of the things on that mount. So I'm going to have to grind down the mount a little bit. But yeah, um, everything seems seems straight. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull this stuff off and finish the welds on it.
So on this side I tried the drag technique, didn't really work very well. This side I did the push technique and I was able to control it a hell of a lot better. That's the type of burn-in I want to see right there is that. So Both good welds, they're both hold, that one's a lot prettier. Um, so yeah. I may lay some stitch welds on the back end of it, the other side. Not really necessary, but might just do it anyways. So yeah, there's a couple of little stitch welds there to make sure that stays nice and in place. All right, so this is the rear mount. My original plan was to bolt it into place down here on the subframe and then weld it to the subframe. But I think I might actually be able to get away with just bolting it in. Um, but in, in order to stiffen it, uh, what I'm gonna do is weld a, uh, a vertical bar across the back and uh, that should make it substantially stiffer so that it doesn't flex because when it's bolted in you know it's hanging over the subframe about like there there's not a whole lot of um i sound like a gunshot um <laughs> but yeah there's not a whole lot of uh that's hanging over so i don't think i have to worry too much about it like wanting to flex once this is bolted in or welded in. I'll probably just weld it like about there, probably not the whole way across. Um, so yeah, I've already kind of prepped this to be welded. So I just need to go ahead and cut this bar to length and descale it and uh, trim her up and get her bolted on. So this is a little reinforcement, still nice and toasty. Uh, yeah, got it all trimmed and sanded. You don't have to watch any of that boring stuff. Really good idea to invest in these little paper masks if you're going to be doing a lot of sanding, especially with this metal. Especially if you're doing stainless and stuff, is pretty nasty. So, so anyways, this will just bolt on, or not bolt on. This will just weld on, like so, and that should give me enough um, enough support to where this isn't going to want to bend and flex I mean, it's a pretty pretty hardy piece there so we'll give that a shot uh, I get it tacked up and welded and see how she do all right, so here's the rear lower motor mount. Um, it's one of those things where it started off with an idea and I kept adding stuff to it as an afterthought, so it really looks like everything on it is an afterthought. Um, I mean, originally it was just a flat plate with two uprights and this guy. And I was like, well, I feel like that's gonna flex if all I do is bolt it on, because I was gonna weld it to the subframe, but then I was like, I feel like that, that'll be too difficult to get the engine on and off you know trying to line those forks up with this bushing so I was like I'll make it so I can bolt it on and off but I'll reinforce it so reinforce it on that side and I was like it still just doesn't look strong enough because I'm not like a structural engineer or anything so I went ahead and welded the plate on the front side and then I realized that that's pretty warm on the bottom um, where this sits, there's about a quarter inch gap between, you know, the plate and where it mounts to. And I didn't want a gap in between there because if you if you have a gap and you try and tighten it down, the metal's going to stretch, and 
you know bolts come loose and motor mounts fall off and stuff so i wanted to make sure that whatever this bolted to was it was flat against it so i welded that plate on the bottom you know so now this thing weighs about like i don't know maybe like three pounds or so it's pretty heavy i actually have a scale around here somewhere well anyways i can't find the scale but just to kind of show you where this guy goes let me get over on this side if i don't fall oh god so this guy goes right down here and i drilled those holes out there was it was originally like an m m8 or maybe a m10 so i went ahead and drilled it for an m12 got some 10.9 bolts one in the back and I'll bolt it in from the bottom and that will hold the back you know that will hold the back of the uh, the trans that should be pretty solid but oh god it should be good for now so I think the next thing I'm gonna do is get everything bolted back up and make sure that the engine actually is capable of freestanding before I move on to anything else. Oh yeah, and there's the other two mounts. I went ahead and just painted them with some brake caliper paint, but I didn't prep them. I just wanted to see what color they look like. I don't think that's pretty solid. I don't think it's very solid, so I'll probably sandblast them and repaint them something more permanent. All right. So yeah, I'm filming this after I edited the video or started to edit the video and I realized I never really did like a an outro or anything for it or a ending. So anyways, um, engine is in there. It is, you know, solid in there by itself. There's no no hoist holding it. It's just the mounts. I went ahead and threw some paint on the mounts to keep them from rusting. Um, not, not the prettiest welds in the world, but, you know, they'll, they, they should hold. Uh, this one I didn't end up taking. I ended up just, uh, just migging it. Back mount, of course, in there and everything. So, the only mount I haven't finished or even started yet is this rear mount. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it. Um, the easiest thing to do, obviously, would be just to just go ahead and weld on something here to attached to here this is where the mount is supposed to attach these this boss here um actually i think i have a plate somewhere oh that doesn't matter i'm not gonna get distracted oh it's right here this little guy here yes i think this is the one this might be for something else Maybe that's it. It's probably not. Anyways, but there'll be a plate that mounts and then some type of 
you know, bushing housing and then something that mounts to this frame rail. So the original mounts for the frame rail are back here. So I'm thinking what I could do is a uh, kind of like a plate that bolts on here and comes over and maybe a plate up top weld them together so it's kind of it forms a kind of like an L bracket an L channel kind of thing that this can mount to but I don't know I haven't really thought about it. I mean I've thought about it but I haven't I haven't completed the thought I guess so but anyways uh, I think that's about it for now um, now that it's kind of mounted in there, I can go ahead, I can start on getting the shifter mounted, because it's just sitting there right now. You know, once the shifter's mounted, I can get the shift linkage in and get that all situated and everything. And then once all the, you know, details are ironed out, how the shift linkage and all that stuff will be mounted. I can pull everything back out and actually get everything bolted to the real engine and then put everything back in and um, have a running car again. Well, almost have a running car again because I decided that while I was doing this I was going to redo the wiring harness so right now the wiring harness is, uh, you know, that. So I got to redo that, get that done. but. That's a whole other thing unassociated with the transmission swap. But, uh, yeah. So. So, yeah. So far, looks like it's going good. Uh, only other thing, these, these axles, they, they ended up a little bit closer to this frame rail than I really want it. But, I mean, these mounts aren't going to budge. They, they seem pretty solid. So I don't have to worry about the engine like rocking back and making con and having those axles make contact with with the subframe. But still, I think I might once I take this out, I'll clearance the subframe a little bit. By clearance, I mean heat it and hit it with a hammer. So yep. So like I said, for this particular video, this seems like a good stopping point. So till next time.